Ilja Hoboys, holla at her go boys, bring her head round, now all together. Ilja Hoboys, holla at her go boys. This is Chronicle on WCVB Channel 5. You know we travel the main streets and back roads, but frankly, even in New England, sometimes you can run out of real estate. But there's a whole lot more to discover out there. Just beyond Rockland Harbor on Maine's mid coast is Penobscot Bay, where you'll find plenty of lobster and adventure with hundreds of islands to explore. This kind of travel can't be done in a 1969 Chevy Impala. Fortunately, we hopped a ride on an 1871 schooner, the Stephen Tabor. Arriving somewhere under sail is about the coolest way to arrive anywhere. Noah Barnes captains this ship, our home for the next three days. And yes, this is my actual bunk. But fortunately, I won't be spending much time here as it's all hands on deck. Hey! For 20 adventurous guests and the small crew of the Tabor as we travel by sail with no set schedule through the main islands. We'll end up at the place that we got the most out of the day. We have the best sunset, we have the coolest walk ashore. Like we'll just use the day as we can and then we'll eat really well and we'll wake up and do it again. And boy do we eat. But let's not put the stern before the bow. Our journey starts here in Rockland, Maine, home to the largest classic schooner fleet in the world. Rockland was the fourth largest seaport in the United States. Boston, Philadelphia, New York, and Rockland, Maine, believe it or not. Now every time you see an 18-wheeler on the turnpike, you know that was a schooner back in the old days. The newsboy. Captain Jim Sharp knows a thing or two about the old days. I'm the oldest thing around anymore. All the old skippers have died off before me. I own four of the biggest schooners here on the coast. Including at one point, the Stephen Tabor. Built in 1871, that's six years after Lincoln was shot in the Ford Theater. Can you imagine the waters that she has sailed over all those years? I bought the Stephen Tabor back in 1962. In those days, she leaked a lot. I got up one morning and I swung out of my bunk and I was up over my ankles. In the water, I said, all right, boys, if we're going sailing, we're going to go bailing first. Come gather around me, sailors. After 75 years of sailing, Captain Sharp has a lot to sing about and quite a few souvenirs as well. I had a lot of paraphernalia left over from my career. And my wife said, get some of this stuff out of the house. So I said, well, maybe it's a good time to start a museum. So he did, right here in Rockland, with the Sail, Power, and Steam Museum where you'll find historic artifacts. Right overhead, you see the Stephen Tabor's bowsprit right there. This is the North Star. Take a crash course in celestial navigation. 44 degrees, five minutes, which is our latitude right here in Rockland. And learn a little history. This is a little model of the schooner Bowden. She's only 88 feet long. She's a wooden vessel, the official vessel of Maine. But perhaps the greatest treasure here is Captain Jim Sharp himself, whose work to preserve this way of life earned him the Windjammer Association's Lifetime Appreciation Award in 2017, a lifetime you can read about in his book. It's uh, all my memoirs, and uh, most of it's true. And we're off. From a maritime museum to a piece of maritime history, the Stephen Tabor for our three-day cruise. Here to send me off, two people who know this ship well. Meet Ken and Ellen Barnes. In 1976, we were four years out of teaching. So we left our four children at home, and we went on a windjammer trip. It was an epiphany. So to make a long story short, we bought it. So we visit a lot of bed and breakfast owners, and the fantasy before they buy it is one thing, and then once they're the owners of that, it's a much different deal. Did you have any kind of a similar experience? It was none of that. We knew what we were getting into. And from that day until a year and a half later, we didn't have a day off. They completely rebuilt the ship while using their theater backgrounds to create an unforgettable guest experience that has brought visitors back for more than 25 years. We watched them 
people meet on board and come back and get married on board and name their firstborn Stephen. It's easy to see how one could find love aboard a ship with these two at the helm. They've been together for 60 years. I married my best friend. People and, ask and, us all the time, it's luck. There's some love in there as well as the luck though, right? <laughs> That's at the top. About the meanest thing I call her is little Miss Bossy Pants. <laughs> Hand in hand, these barns take to shore so that this barn's youngest son, Noah, current captain of the Tabor, can start our adventure. What an adventure. Yeah. All right, so the trip that the elder barns took that made them fall in love with the Windjammer cruising was not the Stephen Tabor. No, they just fell in love with the idea. They came back to the area to begin to look around to see if they could find a ship. They really weren't going to do it right away, but Ken Barnes is in a coffee shop, says to somebody, I'm looking to buy a schooner at some wow. point. They say, hey, the Stephen Tabor happens to be for sale right now. He went to see it. Love at first sight for both of them. The rest is history. What an adventure. <laughs> what a great story. All right, once the sails are up, the feasting begins.